Show of hands, who's ever heard the term Burr Brown? Burr Brown was a company founded back in the 50s. Uh, Wikipedia says the two guys that founded it were named Paige Burr and Thomas Brown. They got into um, mixed signal integrated circuits. Um, they produced DACs, digital to analog converters for many years, and then were bought out by Texas Instruments in, in September of 2000, Texas Instruments acquired the company for $7.6 billion. Billion. Um, Texas Instruments has continued to um, I guess drive the technology, uh, I think, a similar way. They've kept the moniker um, on their chips that are that, that have this Burr Brown DAC technology in them. Um, that's all leading up to this is a review of the SMSL SD793-2 DAC. It's based on the Burr Brown Texas Instruments PCM1793 DAC chip. Uh, it's a chip that's capable of 24 bits per channel and 192 kilobit sample rates. The digital interface chip in this particular DAC is called a DIR9001. Um, that's the one that takes Spitith or Toslink and converts it to probably internally I squared S, sends it over to the DAC chip. And then on the other side of the DAC chip, there is an OPA2134 op amp. I, I'm not sure if that's the headphone amp or not, but this DAC is, you know, it, it'll take Spitith. Toss link, convert it to uh, analog RCA, but it's also got a headphone amplifier built into it and a volume control on the front. Um, it will only work at 96 kilohertz, even though the DAC chip is capable of more, and I think that's a limitation of the, DR, the DIR 9001. It's very well, should I say simplistic? <laughs> it's got um, a button on the front where you can turn it on and off. It's got a button beside that where you can choose if you want the toss link or the spit if. Toss link is optical, right? I think toss link and spit if are kind of synonymous, but in order for it to be optical, it has to be toss link. It also has what they call a coaxial input. It's the same, I think it's the same signal, uh, except it's uh, carried over analog wires instead of over optical. I mean, I need to do a little research on that. Maybe there might be, one might be able to do a little more than the other. Might, one might compress, possibly compress the signal a little more than the other. Uh, and, on, and it has analog outputs on the back. Comes with a uh, brick power supply. I'm not sure what the voltage is on that. Um, has another. So that's the two buttons on the front. It has a headphone jack on the front. One of those big headphone jacks, like we used to have back in the '70s, right? Where you plug a thing in there that's that long. I had to buy an adapter so I could use it with my headphones. That was a debacle. I got a, I got an adapt. <laughs> you can't buy one. They come in like a pack of three or four for like five bucks. The first ones I ordered, they came and I think there was, I think there was three of them. They were all bad. None of them worked right. <laughs> so then I got another set that were two. It was two, and these have like a plastic ring around them, and they work okay. 
So one of those adapters just basically stays plugged into this DAC all the time. To the right of that, volume control for the headphone amp. The volume control does not affect the RCA line, line outputs. So how does it sound? Um, I first got it and I listened to it for about a day and a half. And I did a lot of AB, AB, right? AB'd with my DAC that's in my um, Pioneer Elite receiver. I AB'd it with the DAC that's in the television. Nothing special, right? It's just the DAC in the in a in a to Toshiba TV. It has a 3.5 millimeter output on the side, like a headphone jack output on the side of it. I beat it with that. I beat it with my phone. I beat it with my laptop. And then I RMA'd it. <laughs> I, I sat down on the Amazon and I actually I requested the return. And I put in there that, I don't know, what's the point of paying $70 for a DAC? when you can't hear any difference, right? Now, it's not very expensive for a DAC. It's pretty cheap. And when you consider what a lot of DACs cost that have a Burr Brown chipset, this is really cheap. Usually they're over 100 bucks. Now this chip, I think, is a little older, right? This technology is probably from 20, 12-ish, right? It's been out a long time. Um, when I bought, bought mine from Amazon, it said there was only one left. <laughs> so I went ahead and got it, right? And I've been playing with it for a long time now. And when I go back to Amazon and look at, look at it, it says on the website, there's only one left. <laughs> so maybe they're expecting me to send mine back and then they'll have one to sell somebody else. But uh, I'm not going to send it back. I did sit down one night and I was listening to this song called Chase Lounge by a group called Wet Leg. It's obscure. Um, it's a good song. I like it. It's cute. But I could hear a difference in the girl's voice. Um, i trying to remember what she was singing. Eh, it doesn't matter. But it it compares pretty equally compares with the Pioneer Elite. Um, surprisingly, my phone held up pretty good next to it. Uh, it's much better than my laptop and better than the TV. Now, the main thing that I could pick out was, I think what they call sim sibilance, si sibilance in the S sounds of the girl's voice. The other DAX, the less, the, the, I guess the slightly inferior DAX would slur it a little more than this one, where this one never really well, unless the recording was bad, this one was able to not smear the S sounds together better than the other DACs. And then I think over time, I also noticed that, well, I don't know, it could also possibly be, possibly be the amp, but I think I noticed that the sound was a little more dynamic. The dynamic range of this DAC was a little more enthusiastic. Um, probably in the low mids would be where it would show up, like a drum roll, for example. Example, not really, you know, not the really deep bassy stuff, uh, but a drum roll would really, you know, have a lot of punch to it. Um, so yeah. I, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to consider it my reference DAC, right? Like, I think it's probably the best DAC I have. Now, I, I, I will say, I am no expert at this, 
You know, it's not, I can't say to you that this DAC is better than other DACs that you would buy that are considered, a, you know, performance DACs. This is the first DAC I've ever bought that that's all it's for, right? That, this, this thing is for nothing else. I mean, as a headphone amp, I'm not, I mean, maybe it's good. Probably, it's probably good. I should maybe have thought about that a little more. I didn't buy it for a headphone amp. Honestly, don't listen to headphones that much. Um, the reason I don't like, it's not that I don't like headphones. It's just that I don't. Headphones are good when you need to not bother other people. But if I want to listen to music and I have the space, right, I want to hear it uh, out there on a set of speakers in front of me. Um, I don't, while I appreciate the incredible clarity and detail you can get from headphones, you, uh, you hear things, right, that you just, you don't really notice uh, through speakers, big speakers. And I appreciate that, but it all just sounds like it's playing over my head where I, I prefer for it to sound like it's out in front of me and, you know, maybe around me above a little, but not up here, right? In, in headphones, everything sounds like it's playing above, around and above my head, which... I just, I don't know. I don't dig it that much. No, I just don't like it as much as I do listening to some really nice speakers. Also, don't, you know, you don't get the bass. When you're listening to a nice pair of speakers, maybe you got a sub hooked up, you know, you're going to feel the impact so much better. But this is not about headphones. This, and it, I guess it is about headphone amplifiers. I did plug in the headphone amplifier and I listened to it and it sounded really good. I, I, and I have no complaints. Seem to have enough power uh, to drive my, um, what are those things called? Uh, are they Panasonic? Uh, I don't remember. I've got a review up on my channel. Um, they're good clear headphones. Pick up a lot of detail and this DAC did not disappoint uh, in the headphone amp section. So I guess I would end it there. Uh, I don't really have anything bad to say. I have no reason to think that this thing is not worth sixty-seven ninety-nine, which is, which is for a burp. Far as I know, I've done some. I've done a little little digging. It's probably the cheapest Burr Brown DAC you're going to be able to get your hands on. So that alone, uh, probably makes it, you know, a steal in a way. Um, now, that I don't think it's gonna be, a, it's been around for a long time. I, it probably won't be around much longer. I doubt that SMSL are making them. Oh, the build quality is excellent. Uh, you know, it's it's in a, it's got a really thick aluminum front, front panel. Um, the knob, the, the headphone amplifier knob, the, <laughs> The knurls, it's got these knurls, right? But they run around like the the edge of the headphone knob like this. Instead of going like that, where you feel like you're getting grip, they run the other way. <laughs> Which is just weird to me because you, when you're turning it, it almost feels like it's slipping. <laughs> you, can't, you can't really tell if you're turning it or not. You know, that's nitpicking. I don't want to make that a complaint. Um, they probably put a little extra effort into machining that knob. It's a nice knob. Feels like it's metal. Usually they're plastic, right? And then uh, the case, it looks good. Um, it's got some nice uh, hex head screws going in the front of it. Give it a little touch of class. Um, and, you know, the, the model number, it's all about the DAC chip. You know, it's the it's the SD793 Mark II. Um, I don't know what the Mark II is about, but it is. It's a Mark II, and Mark IIs are usually better than Mark Ones. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching.
is your muffin buttered? Would you like us to assign someone to butter your muffin? Excuse me, what? Excuse me, what? 